See, I, me and this new drinks, we, we're, we're on the same wavelength. All right, you know what, new drinks? You can screw us. Screw it. No more. <laughs> I, I want we're your team to fail. On the same wavelength. I, oh, that's pretty mean. <laughs> I want your team to fail now. So rude. Make me, make me feel bad about myself. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I guess we're getting the champ select now. It's long overdue. Go ahead and go take a look at our bands. Graves, Lux, Jana, Rek'Sai, Jax, and a floater right now. Hmm. This Two is very strong picks. Because Two, I, I, yeah, go yeah. ahead. No, I was just going to say, I see two very strong picks in the Graves and the Lux. Super obvious, but the Jana? What's up with the Jana? I actually don't like the Jana band at all. Uh, Jana is good if you know how to play her, and she can be really good in the current meta, but... In comparison to the kind of team comps that we're seeing, Jenna kind of doesn't really fit. Um, and Lucian is actually, I think, one of the highest pick champions in the league right now. I think he's eight out of twelve. I think no, nine out of twelve right now. I think so. But he's been playing every game I've been play. I've casted so. Yeah, we got the stats somewhere. Stats guy. Hashtag stats guy. Where is he? <laughs> Anybody want to do a lot of legwork for for no reward? Exactly. Come do stats. <laughs> oh boy. Maybe, maybe a little target brand ban out of the Thresh Prince, but. Anyways, we won't see the Jana. Or the Moon though, so. It's definitely gonna be down into the champion pool rosters for everybody. Oh my God! Whoa. What the uh, hello. What was that? The Silo. <laughs> Getting attacked. Was that Visago? I it was. Oh my god. Where are you, Neo, when we need you? Robots Save us, taken. please. <laughs> Neo. Oh my god, I got that one. Right. Oh. Anyways, Olaf, Diana. Excuse me, Olaf, Leona. Very two strong tanks are coming out from Funk. Another Udyr. Has Udyr's rate improved yet? Not in this tournament. Nope. Uh, I believe Udyr is a high uh, percentage win in solo queue, but in this tournament, I don't think he's won one game. I can't remember a game this season he's won. But maybe uh, maybe uh, Hodor's plan to change that. Again, looks like they got another team comp that he really just doesn't... He just doesn't fit in almost any team comp. Unless you pair him up with like a Volibear or something. I can actually look it up right now. I can see some stats. Uh, let's go to the stats page because Udyr is one of those champions that's probably a rip, one of the roughest runs. No, nah, I mean, but it doesn't even matter though with this Udyr because Funk was just like, hey, we're just going to counter that with Janna, Ezreal. Yeah. Have fun trying to play your champion, you know. You're just going to beat your head and your keyboard for a solid 40 minutes. Yeah, there is a very big amount of Wow, I, the Ezreal is incredibly safe in the bot side. So Coupled that with the Leona and the impossible uh, engage and stuns that she has. And then the Vi pick up for CTF! Oh, that's oh. actually huge for him. Yeah, you got the Vi. There's a lot of go in potential on Funk side. A lot of it. They go in and go hard. They have the Olaf ultimate that can just go through any kind of CC that Team Hodor's has. They have the Vi ultimate that just goes through whatever they want with the ultimate. You have the Syndra stun with the Scatter the Weak. You have the insane burst potential with their ultimate. Uh, and then you have the safety of Ezreal with this nice poke damage and then the engage of Leona. So they have a very hard go in now kind of comp. Whereas on the Hodor side, they have a, I guess, kind of more of a pick comp, maybe? A dueling pick comp? A du yeah, more I, I, if a they're running. If they're running in, in twos or threes, it'll be they'll definitely the the win on a lot of the two and three skirmishes from the Funk team. But uh, I, I mean, if Hodor's can kind of work that across the map right there in that early game, or, or not in the early game, but right as we start to rotate out of the laning phase, if they can find those two-man, three-man skirmishes. They should be able to take a solid lead, but if they just wait, and the funk just kind of groups up and collapses on them. Hodor's are gonna be in trouble in my book. Yeah, but there's so much wrong 
in my opinion, the Hodor's team comp that could go wrong here. They have yeah. on team Funk, oh, side, yeah. they have the Ezreal, who I'm assuming is going to go Iceborne Gauntlet, which is that slow. You have the Scatter uh, it's a blue build Ezreal, of course. Yeah, you have the slows from Syndra's W. You have the Scatter of the Week with the stun. You have the Pi uh, Lockdown. You have the Olaf Axes with the slow. There's so much potential from Funk's team that to just shut down this Hodor's comp with the Udyr, that he's just going to have to flash Bear Slap, which is what he's always had to do in this tournament. So, we'll see. How <laughs> he's going to have to try to flash Bear Slap. I mean, look at all the people coming past his line to try to get it to the squishies. Yeah. Of the Hodor's team, you got Olaf who's not going to get stunned up. Vi's just going to say thank you very much. I got Leona who's going to jump in right behind there. So, you haven't... Udi has your tank here. It's not quite. I hate to be on a champion, you know, a champion when he's down, but Udi just does not seem the right pick here. Now, hopefully, hopefully the real Josh proves us wrong. I would love to see that. It should have been love to an see elite. Finally, it should have been. An elite. It should have. Could be an Elise. It could be Sir Johnny even maybe coming back in with a huge five-man stun. You never know what type of cheap fight that could prove. Maybe even get. I, I, on a Mumu to right after the Olaf Vi come in and Leona come in, you can still get the five man stun if you position yourself correctly. After they run past, bam. But I'm not sure about this Udyr. Maybe Fior, you know, Fiora is going to be able to tank that up a little bit. Well, we'll see. She should, if she goes the right build, it generally goes Titanic Hydra into Steric's gauge. Or no, t Titanic into uh, Black Cleaver, then swap it to a Ravenous. So she can get a little tanky, if anything. But I, I, the only real tank there being Braum and being a support, not getting the gold income that you need to really be that tanky front line is kind of going to be an issue for Hodor's. But we'll see if the real Josh can pull out the Udyr. Uh, Brent, as with every game we've done thus far, I have to ask you a question. Oh. I think we both agree. I think we agree on this one, though. I think we agree. Yeah. I think yeah. we're both going to... I. Speaking for the both of us, we're going to put our money on the Funk team. Yeah, I believe so. Just based to on beat the, the Hodors. Picks, I agree. The Hodors are no. one of the only undefeated teams in the tournament, though. So that is... Oh, that, you know what? That's true. That's true. They do bring a solid team dynamic and mechanics for this tournament. So, I mean, they're always a strong contender, but I think Funk just outdrafted them. Yeah. By far, I think Hodor's were trying to get their power picks, and they got some solid picks. They got the Lucian, they got the Braum, they got the Fiora, they got the Ari. I mean, Ari's pretty strong too, but when you're looking at the lineup of the Syndra, you know, and the Ezreal for the poke, that Lucian's not going to be able to really get in range late game. He's going to get absolutely just dove on very easily by all of the Funk team. This is going to be a fervor, Lucian, just watch. Ah, oh, better be Thunderlords. Not, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man. It, it is going to be Fervor. It's Fervor, I told you. It is going to be Fervor. Fervor is so much better on Lucian, man. Mm. I'm telling that you. is one of these subjects we are both going to disagree on <laughs> no, constantly. No, even, no, even Rito made a video about it. Come on, man. <laughs> I will not play Fervor on Lucian. Even though you auto-attack a punch, I still feel that when you... I'm all about winning the early game with Lucian to then win the rest of the game. Because if you win the early game as an ADC, if you get two or three kills in your lane, you're going to win that game. As long as your team's not completely throwing it for you. I don't know, you. Brent. I've seen your games. <laughs> <laughs> Fair Savage. enough. Fair enough. But in my, in my opinion, I think the Lucian... I mean, yes, it, it all depends on how he wants to play, but... I know in, in my style of play, which is a very aggressive style, I'm always looking to to hit that, that Q pop pop combo with the passive and just proc that Thunderlords constantly every 30 seconds, every 30 seconds, every 30 seconds. You know, of course, it's shorter than that, but <laughs> that's what I'm always looking to do. So maybe I just play a little different. Maybe I'm too aggressive. You're a very aggressive carry, to say the least. So I see it going for a more of a later game style i suppose you could say so let's see if funk we can pull out the win indeed. here as we both uh foresaw in the prophecy uh, ezreal though going fervor as well 
Which can proc with his E because it's on hit effect. Oh no, it is basic attacks. Never mind. Yeah, so that. I I, see, I disagree with the Ezreal as well. I, I do. I disagree with the Ezreal. I can I understand the Ezreal disagreement there. Uh, blue build Ezreal is not so much more about auto attacking. It's more so about poke kite, poke kite, poke kite. Uh, so poke, forever poke, may poke. not be the best choice there, but uh, you never know. This could go either way. I doubt it's going to come down to Mastery's winning the game here. So. Either yeah, way. we will see. Now, one thing that may win this game is that that Clins on the Syndra. Yeah. Bringing it well, Clins out of. Potential like the Udir stun or the Brom. Or the Charm. That could lane. be. Yeah, or the Charm and Lane. Yeah, that could be a huge, a huge summoner come late game or even early game. So, we'll see. We will see indeed as we get on the rip. Uh, check your time. I, I want to make sure we're on the same time here. I'm at 33 seconds. How about you? 35, 36, 37, 38. 7, 38, okay. 39, cool, cool, cool. 40. Woo! Hype it up. We got it, boys. Anyways, I just want to. I'm not even sure what day this is in the season. All I know it's season three and Funk and Hodos are going at it. Sorry to everybody for being out of touch, but we're going to make up for it this game. And we're going to have a very fun and exciting game. At least I am. I hope you join me for it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Anyways, what do you think of this top lane start, Lee? Uh, Corrupting standard. Potion versus Dorans. I think that Olaf has some sustain with his W, so he should be okay with that. I don't know if you want to trade with... Fiora and her vitals. If she can play this properly, she should be pretty fine up there, especially with the Doran's Blade Sustain. So, could go any way, any which way in the top. I wouldn't be surprised to see it turn in the side of the Fiora, but depends on how Olaf plays it. So, maybe maybe in Fiora's favor, then? Yeah. No, we will see. So, as we get into the action, all the both junglers are starting with a standard bottom lane start. I mean, maybe a little bit of top or million action coming up in three minutes. We'll keep our eyes up, but we're moving on just to get some farm and just waiting for this Leona to go aggressive. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of surprised that Team Funk is not pushing as aggressively, trying to get that level two early. Uh, generally, Leona, as soon as she gets that level two, can be super hyper aggressive and then probably cheese an early kill out or at least blow a couple of flashes or summon herself. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something in the bot lane. Oh, well, speaking of early too, yep. Fiora in the top lane is going to chunk out this hole off a bit. Yep. Holy crap, he's definitely going to have to be chugging that. what I say? See, that Corrupting Potion is good for trading, but when you're up against the Fiora who has natural sustain with her lunge, oh, you engage in the bot lane though. All right, there's that level two we were talking about earlier from the Leona. Brom Lucian playing that a little bit too passive. Gonna take some damage trade, but Fiora is is bringing the train on this Olaf. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate for Olaf too because Corrupting Potion isn't so much about the sustain; it's more about the trading with the potions. So he's gonna be hurting Puppy at least in this early game while he's kind of suffering. Yeah. Well. At least he, until he gets a little bit of tank. Now, Lucian's actually going in there. That would have been a Thunderlord's proc. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm man. still saying I still put, I'll put it out for everybody so everybody at home knows. Now, big thing we just saw in the jungle. Now, Udir is already in the top lane a little bit. Uh, or he's one camp short of this buy. But that means he had an open opportunity to gank, but decided not to use it. So, going to be going to be five farm down now. Yeah, if anything, a little bit of a waste of time there from Udir going up to the top lane. Well, Fiora is pushing so far up, there's really no reason to try and gank an Olaf under tower, so. A little bit of mis uh, communication or misinterpreting information there for Udir. Yeah, he put all those wards down, but Vi's. Vi may or may not look to come up there. She only has one camp left up on the top side of her jungle. Now, the Wraith should come up, so that, but that'll mean she's going to be moving. Towards the boss side of her jungle, so we'll see if that ward actually comes into any sort of use or effect here. Yeah, that's uh, but Fiora should... incredibly good, well-placed ward there. There it is. The ward actually going to spot out the Fiora, or the Vi. Fiora is reacting 
right at it, so she's not gonna get caught from it. She's got both the scuttle crab and that ward in the tri brush, so she's gonna get out just. She should be just fine. As Vi actually stayed and looking for that gang, though, it's gonna get <laughs> reposted, and Vi is gonna get stunned up for it. Yeah, that was very, very cool and calm headed by Ricky Pope in the top lane. That repost, really well done. I think a little bit of a tension from CTF there, a little bit of quick fingers there uh, with the early assault and blip right there, it kind of stunned him up and made the gank a little pointless and kept your safe. Yeah, it's going to keep her safe and she's also going to be able to freeze that wave under her tower, or not under her tower, but very close to her tower. So she's going to have a very, very easy time up there, even after this back from the Olaf. So she should have no problems sustaining and staying up through that lane. Yeah, not at all. She's up about almost uh, roughly 8 CS on this Olaf, and the farm is... She can pretty much freeze this wave there, does she? If she wants it, and she looks like she's going to be able to do it just barely. Nah, it's pushing the tower, unfortunately, so. Yeah, Olaf. Olaf able to get a couple minions in there. Now, the big thing... On farm though, as we see the same discrepancy in the mid lane as Syndra forced Ari back early before uh, before an item timing, so she's gonna be up 15 CS, just about 16 CS over the Syndra, and she was already doing a lot of damage and is a level up. But here we go, she's going in for that damage. The charm is gonna respond to it, but Syndra's just looking for enough orbs to use that ultimate. Yeah, Syndra had level six before Ari, but Vi is looking for a gank in the bot lane. Fight is down there. Lucian is ahead. One pot to Ezreal's none. So Lucian's technically winning this lane. But that's to be standard for uh, early game Lucian compared to maybe a, a later build Ezreal for in that blue build. Now Ari's looking to get aggressive mid lane and she oh. ultimate in. Gonna be able to dodge the sky of the week. The ignite comes down and that's gonna be one dead Syndra. Absolutely for free. Great mechanics coming out of this Ari. That was just poor play by Zolo there. Missing sky of the week. And as we said, Udyr's Bear stancing up at the top lane and Axe of the Face are going to prevent that, but really poor play out of Zolo thus far. He's played Azir, he's played Syndra this game, and yeah, he's got his needlessly large rod, but he gave up first blood to an Ari who he was stomping in lane, so really unfortunate for Funk. Yeah, he didn't respect that damage. Now, even though their mid laner is dead, the rest of this team is going to pick up that dragon. As the fight turns into the top lane, Fiora's trying to get all those vitals. Gonna force the flash out of Auxir. He's barely gonna get out with his life, but Fiora uh, takes even more control of that lane. That could have been a kill for Ricky Popo there had he flashed in. He could have got the one last vital there on the backside and then uh, lunged up to the top side, got the heal, and easily dove that. So maybe it's the differences in how we play the char or the champion. So I don't know. Overall. Trade one for Fiora. Yeah, it was still a trade one, and she decided to play a little bit more cautiously. I can respect that. Not not getting too risky and making sure her team is doing well and not and not giving that chance to even that scoreboard up. Now, Vi's looking to even that scoreboard up, and she kind of comes down the bottom lane, but she's just going to get rejected by that ward coverage. Yeah, you can see that. We need to see some more ganking from these people, or from CTF and the real Joss through the lanes. I, I honestly believe that the ward coverage for bot lane has been really spot on for uh, the Hodors, and Vi's gonna have to at least try some sort of lane gank in order to make anything happen bot lane, or at least blow flash Q and then alt just to get in there. And at that point, it might be too late anyway, so. <clears throat> yeah, it, it may be too late indeed. Vi is looking for these ganks, and even though she's level 6, she hasn't found one yet. Now she's going to try to come in through the lane where there are no ward spotting. Leona's already prepped that bush. So she's going to be very sneaky, sneaky. And here, and the jungle, when she plays CSGO, she goes in sneaky peeky like, and the action turns in onto the Braum as he is going to get very low. Now the Leona goes deeper onto the Ezreal. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Syndra is just taking a lot of punishment. Hannah's gonna fall to the Ari Udir as Lucian tries to dash out of that stun, doesn't quite get it, but the tower dive is on as both flashes go down under turret. Uh, Ezreal is gonna be able to pick that up, and Leona gets out safely, so that's a solid two for one trade for the Funk team. Yeah, that was a big trade there. They got 
two people in that bot lane, they kill the Braum, they kill the Lucian, and that tower dive cost them the heal, cost them both summoners on to Thresh Prince, but picking up two kills for it, overall not that bad. Now Zolo, in yeah. the mid lane, is having some issues with Ooh. this two kill Ari now. He is having a very tough time, and hopefully he'll be able to come back. He hasn't respected that damage yet out of the Ari, and potentially Udyr coming out of the jungle yet, his war coverage. Is not quite there. He's got his pink ward up, but it's too far back for him to be able to spot this Udyr coming around. So he's he, he's gonna have to shift up his war coverage if he wants to do anything. Yeah, there's and being a Cinder, that's really difficult too because you're just innately a lane bully with your Q, your W. You can pretty much clear the wave with one set of spells. Uh, so she's gonna need some wave clear insanely on her side brush as well as on the backside right next to the Raptors just, just to keep are really safe so uh, I would like to see some protective warding from their jungler but it'd go with the chilling smite but more trading in the top and a lot of trading going on but Fiora's got the lifesteal to kind of regen that up and the pots the biggest thing I'm kind of interested about is this Syndra usually we see a lot of Rada ages nowadays or even some magic resist coming out Ari's going obviously for the magic resist side of it with Syndra not building any defensive items early it's kind of affecting her play right now. Yeah, the ultimate goes oh. down on Olaf, though. Yeah, we'll have to hold on to that thought as Ari gets pressured in on mid, and Vi's going to pick that up with the red buff. Fiora also got chunked out in the top lane, even though she threw the ultimate down. She was not able to get the vitals, so Olaf going to push her out of lane and shovel wave in the tower. Now, Udyr's in the bot lane, stunning up the support. The supports that have been the main focus on this. The ultimate's not going to be enough as Lucian secures the kill. Scary game right now. Re pretty much neck and neck even. Gold plus or minus 100 for either team right now. And Fiora having to blow her flash in the top lane is really risky uh -oh. as Vi has her ultimate. Uh oh, no flash. She comes in with the ultimate. Gonna be able to repost the auto attack, but not gonna be able to save her life as Olaf picks it up with a good undertow. Now, Ezreal's in a little bit of trouble. Bot gonna get stunned up by one. He gets it. The ultimate from Braum is gonna miss. Ezreal's running for the safety of his tower. Barely squeaks it out, but the tower dive is on, and Lucian gets it with the calling. It's another blonde-haired kid called out. Oh the tower God. is returned in the top lane. Overall, a kill for a top lane tower. Not the most ideal of a situation, but they do have a gold lead now. The global gold will make up for it, so they have a slight lead in gold, and they now have an open turret in the top, so we'll see what they can make of it. Yeah, that tower doing huge work for him, even though both of their or their mid and their bottom lane is losing and their top lane is really going even. So that tower may help their top lane now and become, you know, take the advantage in that lane as Hodor's look to try to even that gold out somewhere. But since they were unable to take that tower in the bottom lane, it's going to affect them quite a bit. Yeah, overall, while the kills are even, the... Team Funk are just doing better team play. They have a dragon, they have a tower, whereas the Hodors don't have any of that. So the team play seems to be on the side of uh, Team Funk. They rotated top together to get that top tower, but the stun lands on the Ari. Stun lands on Ari, and the stun lands on the Leona in the bottom lane. And once again, the focus of this fight, but Vi is quick on the rotation. It's a three on three. No, they that a four on three as Bjorn teleports in. Now Ezreal's a little bit out of position, but he just sish. Right to safety. Now, the fight is still on in the river, though, as Ezreal's over the wall. Looking to do some damage with the ult. Udyr pushing back three. The dance is still going as Ari rotates down. Now, Olaf's in the mid lane. He is close by, but gonna end up taking a tower, at least getting some damage on this tower for it. Yeah, this is exactly what Funk needs to do. Just keep kind of buying time for Olaf to take this tower. And as soon as Ari roams up, they could probably try and get a sneaky pick here. But they did a lot of damage onto that mid tower and forced a Fiora teleport and ultimate there. So a teleport advantage for Funk and pretty smart of them to not engage in something that they weren't possible with. Oh, they have very smart indeed. And they're still roaming as the squad trying to find more of what they can. Maybe going to look for this dragon as the rest of the Hodor's members start to spread out. The dragon is has been started on. Now the Hodors know about this as Braum was there to see it. We'll see who rotates over. Lucian still hasn't moved yet. Udyr's on his way, but he is going to be late as Vi smites it away. Now Vi better be careful because he's very low. But the Fiora is not going to be able to get into her as Udyr takes the 
brunt of all this damage. Yours in the middle lane, gonna soak up the Vi Ultimate as Ari returns a kill for the super low jungler. That's a one for one trade now, but that should be the end of the aggression. Yeah, that was a one for one trade where Funk picked up the dragon, but Lucian in the bottom lane did pick up their first turret. So overall that I would say that would be a win for Todors. Uh, allowing that turret to go down for pretty much free is not what they should be doing at this early in the game. Especially trading it for a second dragon only. Maybe a third dragon, potentially, but uh, overall not the worst of situations for either team, and it's still really even. Yeah, definitely a win for the Hillers as they re-evened up that gold lead and even took a 300 gold advantage for it. So missing out on that, or giving them that second dragon was completely worth it. Completely yeah. worth it for them, and then being able to pick that up was just huge. Yeah, it's not really worth that much. I think a dragon is... Uh, probably one of the last priorities unless it's a fifth dragon uh, you always want to kind of keep the tower so overall maybe funk didn't want to risk going down for that lucian however he was alone so well, let's see two kills on to the lucian now and up about 20 farm on the ezreal who's going to be the better yeah and, and talking about these 80 carries in these lanes we really weren't expecting funk to get out laned here i was i know myself expect expecting funk to kind of even win the lane and win the team fighting aspects. But right now, Hodors are bringing down really strong laners and have been effectively shutting down the Azrael and the, and the Syndra. Yeah, and Udyr has had actually two successful ganks thus far uh, with his two assists. So maybe this is where the curse breaks, Brent. <laughs> maybe this is where the curse breaks and maybe Funk or Hodors come out with a win and Funk a loss if the Hodors can kind of bring their team fighting on the par they should have no problem i think they shouldn't have as much of a problem as they're fighting here but now as the lanes start to collapse and we start to get into this roaming four or five man squad this could be the skirmish area hodors were looking for yeah we'll see uh, and we're gonna get the stun onto ari a little bit of the poke the slow and she does pop the ultimate interestingly enough so big summoner sp or big cooldown to use right now could lead to more aggression from Funk. You see four members coming towards that mid lane area as there's no tower in the top lane from the grab and too much of a wave in the bottom lane for them to get bottom. So, Udyr is going to be the target of this aggression as Vi comes in with the Leona stun. Udyr's on the way out. A good Brahm ultimate going to keep that path down. Now, Vi going deep with her ultimate. Going to be able to pick up the Udyr with some great AoE. Now, Brahm. Fiora coming on the back side though. Fiora's gonna go deep, but Scatter the Week oh. keeps her right off as Syndra picks up the kill. Now there's five on two here. And the push for the Funk is very strong as that tower only has a fourth of its health remaining. Now Ezreal is gonna try to poke him down, give him a little bit lower. Vi is looking for that engage here. But Lucian's gonna play a little bit too safely, gonna be able to avoid that Syndra ball as Vi is not able to find any sort of additional engages on that either oh the rift herald yes this is the perfect time to pick it up i love that funk is doing this P teams really don't prioritize the rift herald enough they just want a team fight they got a free turret in the mid lane so picking this up will allow olaf or whoever picks up to have that immense amount of lane pressure where pretty much no one can trade with him and they will give it over to the olaf who is already winning against this fiora so that's a really yeah. good pickup as he does also have the double buffs and he's going to get that giant wave in the top lane that's been balled up for him. So Olaf's going to get a very sizable advantage out of that team fight. Now Funk is on a roll as they take the gold lead back. 2,000 gold up. This is a this is going to be a very giant lead in this stage of the game. Allowing Syndra to finish off that defensive item. So she's going to be super safe. No more deaths out of her most likely. At least for a while unless the team fight goes really bad. So not very members or... There's really no one for Hodor to jump on to really assassinate a burst down. Yeah, not right now. It's just uh, they're on the back foot now, and they need to come back into this game where their objective control. Right now, Funk are just having better objective control and rotations. And while Ari does have three kills, there's not much she can do uh, solo against all of Funk. So. No, Funk is just too tanky and just too. Brings too much CC and dive for Ari to be able to sit on the back line and throw the orbs like she wants to. 
So, it, those great rotations here out of Funk as we now see a 4-1 split with Olaf in the bot lane. Facing off against that Lucian, gonna try to take that tower. As mid they try to take Ooh, the tower, they get the already stun, immediately followed by the Yona Flash, engaged, but she barely gets out of there to fall the Ezreal barrage. So, a great dive on the Ari, gonna be able to pick out that member while she was sort of alone. Her team just quite wasn't in position. Now, Leona gonna be able to get out with an easy Syndra slow just in case she needed it. And Funk pick up another kill. That's really interesting. Olaf wasn't even there for the dive, and Olaf is kind of that diving champion that the comp's kind of built around. So the fact that Olaf wasn't there and that was successful is really insane. <laughs> yeah, this should, what's insane is the Syndra showing her power, even though she got shut down in lane a little bit, it kind of turned it back with the help of her jungler. One stun from that Syndra means your life. So Lucian Ari got to play very careful now that Udyr is not going to be able to help you in any, if in that situation, because he's just not a very good peeling jungler. So, Hodor's better be very careful if they want to try to, you know, hold sieges against the Funk team. Yeah, you can see they're going for that third dragon. Where this is actually kind of important for Funk now with the third dragon. That excess move speed is incredibly potent, especially with the comp that they're running, and they. Even more so with the fact that Hodor's don't have their first, so this would be a big pickup if they were able to pick it up. So this is pretty much a forced team fight by F uh, Funk. It would be a huge pickup for the Hodor's indeed. Now Lucian's calling is not up yet. Brahm's ultimate is not up, but all the ultimates are going to be up for the Funk team, and they're going right in with it. Leona comes down, Fi goes deep, Udyr already falls. Now Lucian is on the way out, but Fiora's wow. going to be able to pick her up. So that's a one for two trade already. Now it's one for three trade as few, as Syndra picks up the double kill onto the Brom there just to kind of finish out, round out that team fight. And they're just going to easily turn back onto that dragon and pick up that move speed they want. Yeah, that was really well done. The Vile Ultimate actually split the two lines of Hodor's there as uh, Udyr and Brom were in the front line. Vi ulted straight to the back and... Uh, Kept Lucian, kept Ari in the backside while all the damage units of the fire, or Funk rather, were able to pick off the front line of the Hodors and pick up the kill on Braum and Ari. And then their third dragon, so very well done by Funk. Yeah, I think the very interesting thing to note there is the second Cinder's ultimate came up, Vi was going right in. So all the ultimates were up for Funk, and you were missing a huge cooldown on the Braum. And Lucian just didn't quite have his calling yet either to kind of get some damage. He was kiting out. That came up a little bit later in the fight. So uh, having that Brahm ultimate might have helped him, but that was great play and great timing out of the Funk team to keep track of these cooldowns and just keep track of these initiations. Yeah, and I, I mean, actually there's a question in chat about the dragons and why it's not necessarily worth it for, uh, getting that second dragon. Uh, the second dragon, the buff that it gives you, is only worth a very negligible amount of gold and stats, especially the second dragon, which is, I believe, the minion damage? Or is it the tower? It's the minion, I believe. Uh, the minion damage yeah, so on the fourth one. It's incredibly negligible in team fights and any kind of fight, but uh, a tower oh. is not of gold. Oh, the stone Oh, one. was not negligible. Is that Syndra damage? Holy crap. Lucian get bursted down about a fourth of his health, and Ezreal is just going to help him send him to the grave, and they're just going to push his mid lane once and again. The story just keeps repeating itself as Leona goes deep. Now, Brom did have his ultimate at that time, but it is not going to help. That Uda is forced to flash. Now, Vi did go a little bit too deep under that turret. No minions means that the rest of uh, Vi's team, rest of CTF's team, is not going to follow. Now, the re-engage, Brom is looking for it, but not quite going to be able to get quite in. Oh, they watched the Ezreal ultimate very easily dived out, but that's a huge, huge turnaround potential from the Hodor team, but just weren't quite able to capitalize oh. on it. Oh, Doors, they're in trouble as Cinder goes deep, but she's actually the one in trouble as she goes down to the tower. <laughs> oh, man, that was so close. A little bit of greed there coming from Zolo. Cost him his life. Uh, so, overall... Pretty, mu pretty much one for Hodor's right there. Uh, they did lose. I would, I would say so. Yeah, they lost a little bit on the earlier side of that, but as soon as Cinder went too deep, uh, 
Uh, they got two kills for one, so now they get the pressure this mid tower for free with CTF being the only one to kind of maintain it. Oh yeah, they're gonna look to pressure this retire, and if they can get this mid tower and get this goal, it's definitely gonna even that up and mean that some of these fights may not quite go in Funk's favor anymore, but Vi is gonna lose her life trying to defend it, and then a wasted teleport out of Oxir as that tower was going down. A little bit of miscommunicate or missteps already not coming out of Funk. Could the yeah. Oiler may have a window here. That was you never TP on a turret that's that low of health. There's no reason to risk it. You waste your TP ult, or you waste your TP cooldown. If whether you cancel it or not, uh, it's just too risky to spend that cooldown on something that's not guaranteed. So you always want to spend it on a minion if you can, especially if a tower is that low. So overall, really, mm -hmm. really poor judgment by Ogsir, uh for Funk and uh, Team Hodor's are making their way to the top. Yeah, Hodor's look to continue the pressure as they take another turret in the top lane. Bring that gold deficit even closer, but CTF with the Funk squad want to try to answer this. As Leona just barely misses the ultimate, and Abram is going to cancel that engage for the moment. But Udyr won some, but no he doesn't, not anymore, as he takes a lot of damage. And now Leona is able to get the exhaust on the Ari as Syndra picks up the kill, and the engage keeps happening. As a great Leona flash stun is going to pick up the third member from the Hodor squad. I right, saw so a five man push coming from Funk, but unfortunately, no minions. So they're going to have to turn off potentially onto a Baron, maybe. Yeah, it's really funny. We said that the team comp out of the Hodor is more of a skirmishy kind of skirmish uh, backline comp. But every team fight we get, uh, Fire or Funk Grass, I keep mixing those two. Funk just keeps taking out three members, so it looks like there was a big skirmish, but it wasn't just a big team fight where some members of Hodor's escaped. So, <laughs> yeah, Hodor have just not had a solid team fight engaged at all this entire time, and I think that's partially due to the Udi we we're talking about, is just not able to be that front line. Keep the Olaf, keep the Vi, keep the Leona at bay. Now, that's a tough challenge as it is. But that's almost an impossible challenge with a champion like Udyr. So, a little bit of a misstep. Maybe drafting that so early. And maybe just playing that champion. Maybe he's got to deepen that pool a little bit. But, I think this is this is the end for Hodor's here. As Funk is going to pressure him with a five-man push with the Baron buff. Yeah, 5,000 gold up on a Baron buff. Uh, Dragon should be up relatively soon. I know there's a bug right now that doesn't show the timers, but... Should be up in a few seconds if I'm timing it correctly. This... Oh. Yeah, this team fight team is already crazy enough as it is, and you're just gonna add on to that. Now, Brom Fiora gonna get caught out in the jungle here. Fiora is the target for execution, and executed she does. And CTF even gets the flash for it. So a big summoner spell blown, even though she was already dead. I don't know why she decided to do it. Thought she maybe could get out to safety. Yeah, that was uh, one of those. She knew she was going to die, and she wasn't going to use it, but as soon as she reposted and lived for another split second, she's like, oh, maybe I can get out of it. Maybe I can do it. And she flashed <laughs> kind of, you know, eh. But overall, eh. not the best. It an eh flash indeed. Yeah. Uh, Funk is going to be able to take this next dragon, get a little bit of more minion damage on, and set the clock for the fifth dragon. Leona Syndra are going to keep him at bay, start the zone here. Going to be not even going to get turned on to maybe take a two for four for the Hodor team now. The chase is on as Funk is looking to continue pressuring this Hodor team, giving no respite at all from their pushing. Now, the dive is still going to happen again as Olaf gets a little bit in there. They're really looking for it. They're kind of just poking at it right now. Yeah, there's no reason for Funk to overextend here. They have a Baron buff. They have everything they need, but they've kind of wasted it. They took a... Yeah, the fourth dragon, but with the Baron buff, you want to pressure towers. You want to at least get inner towers with it, so... Kind of a wasted Baron buff, if anything. Oh, for sure. They're definitely, with this type of team, there shouldn't be inner towers left standing. At least not three inner towers left standing at 28 minutes, 29 minutes almost. Where the tower lead is now equal. That's a lot of gold on the map that Funk should have been able to pick up. So maybe the Hodors are turtling very well. And maybe they can use that as kind of a springboard to get back into this game. As the Baron buff doesn't have too much longer. And there is no solid five-man push, but Funk deciding they want to split it. And we'll see if that what comes of it as Olaf is going to be forced to use the ultimate top. And Udyr is just going to immediately turn around, 
Go back to mid, try to help this Brown Lucian. And as I say, the Team Funk are wasting their Baron buff. They finally get the push as it wears off on mid and bot. But oh, mid's in trouble though. Yeah. Mid's definitely in trouble as Udyr comes in, the stun goes down, the calling. Gonna do a lot of work as Brom just secures that kill for him now on the top lane. We got fights all over the map. Fiora Olaf going at yes! it. Olaf getting the better into that Olaf! trade. And Ricky Poo is gonna go bye-bye. As Olaf just absolutely decimates the Fiora just being way too tanky. Now Brom gonna see what he can do. But he will meet the same fate as his top laner if he goes in. So he's just wisely gonna throw a Q and back off. I love, I love the, the Olaf right there. Just awkwardly, slowly walk to the wall, and Fiora can't proc that heal. So, very, very small mechanic that I just absolutely love in the game, where all you have to do to counterplay a Fiora ult is walk <laughs> next to a wall. So, very well done by Oxia for that. <laughs> yeah. That was definitely well played. So, Visago comes out with a good one. But unfortunately, not good enough. As if there was going to be a pause, we could have said Ricky Poo is going poo poo. But oh unfortunately, God. that's not going to be the case. <laughs> as he's just going to go see a gray screen for the next 40 seconds. Oh, Burns. <laughs> oh, man. The Funk is, on, is still on the roll as they continue to increase their goal lead. Now we're up to 6,000 and some change. As they were able to finally pick up one of those inner towers. Now we're just. Waiting for the next few inner towers to fall as Baron Buff should be coming back up soon and the next dragon. So, Hodors are definitely going to be on a clock. They're actually on time for this fifth dragon for Team Funk right now. Something we don't see a lot of with the dragons is games go a lot quicker in the new meta. But oh, Olaf got charmed and popped the ultimate, does a lot of damage. <laughs> That is 2 on one at the top. Olaf just pops his ultimate and says, Hey, we can go at it if you want. I got my teammates right here to back me up. If you're an Arya, we're just wisely going to nope out of there. And they would probably would have even died 1v2 to that Olaf. Yeah. As such, is not going to be the case now. Five, Funk six. is looking for some picks, but there's no tower left in the top lane to push for. So a little bit of a misallocation of their resources as Olaf was really hungry to fight somebody. Udyr's gonna give him that chance as he starts to go in. Now the rest of the team starts to collapse. No Ezreal though, so it will be a 4 on 5 for a little bit as Udyr pops and make that a 4 on 4 as Ari goes straight in. Now the Braum gonna zone everybody back a little bit. Ari's gonna die for it, but she's gonna meet the same fate. Now Fiora jumps in and she's still on the roll. Not gonna be able to repost that, but Syndra is very low. Gonna go into the gold state and live as Olaf picks up a triple. He's looking for the quadra kill. He's coming in. Gonna get stunned up now. Cinder's gonna help him with the stun. Whoa! With the quadra. There it is. He could get the pentakill. It's oh! in his hands. He's gonna get it. That's the pentakill as Brom goes down with the rest of his teammates. And that should be at least an inhibitor. Yeah, that that was insane. I don't understand why the team split up there. Ezreal on the back side pushed the Lucian and pushed the Brom away from the Olaf, which allowed him to pick up the Arya and pop the Udyr and the Fiora on the backside. So as soon as Team Hodor is split like that, the front line and the back line split, it allowed Olaf to just do whatever he wanted with whoever he wanted. So really well done by Olaf and Team Funk right there. That was amazingly well done. As he was on the front line of that action the whole time, just soaking up damage, soaking up damage, and just putting that damage right back into the faces of Hodor's. And he doesn't even have a death on this game for it. He's been so aggressive all game. So just amazing play. Out of Auxier here. Yeah, this is going to be a really difficult Olaf to shut down right now. 10 kills, 0 deaths, 6 assists. He's got his Titanic. He's got his Black Cleaver. And all of this armor and MR. And not to mention his Swifty boots as well. So no one's stopping him from going where he wants. No, nobody's stopping him indeed. Funk banned out Mundo this game, but they got the next champion that goes right, mm -hmm. right now. He pleases the Baron buff. Yeah, he's just gonna be dealing out insane damage. Also, he's level 17. Oh. Right now, the highest member on Team uh, Hodor's is 15, so he's two levels up on the highest member. Now, here we go. This could be the last final fight. As Hodor is trying to get this fifth dragon, or stop this fifth dragon from having to get there first. Nope. And Udyr is going to be on smite of the way, but the fight is on. 
as Hodos is trapped in the pit. Now, Vi died a little bit early, but Leona is going to be able to push out Lucia. She chases him over the Dragon Pit. Now, Fiora chasing away that Syndra, but Ezreal pops her for it. Now, that's a one for two already for the Hodos. So, Hodos coming out ahead on that, but Ari is going to back oh in a ridiculous my. place and lose her life for it. A lot of blinking red. Everybody blinking red from the Hodor team. As Funk is not letting up, they are using this Baron buff to its full potential now. As Olaf is just going to face tank these towers, and they're looking for more. As Ezreal c comes in, he's looking for this tower dive. Olaf's on the backside. This is one oh, dead Lucian. Man. Rest in peace, and Olaf's going to finish it out. Yeah, that uh, Utopian Doug has this in, in, right. He's got this completely right. right. This Ogsier is Olaf. He's just running on pure undiluted funk right now coming at 11 0 8 kda 35 minutes holy crap in the game a per yeah a perfect game and a pentakill for Isaiah who just went ham tonight and just did absolutely just wonderful and said hey white boy play that funky music as funk picks up the win in 35 minutes with the score line 14 to 26 funk's favor